Let's look at how we can calculate changes in entropy. We're going to assume to start with that we have a constant pressure process. When heat is transferred into our system, the entropy of this system, or the disorder, increases. So as heat transfers in, entropy increases. This allows us to write that delta S of the system is proportional to the heat transferred into the system. It's also the case that the uh, change in entropy depends on the temperature. And in fact, it is inversely proportional. for this is that if the system is at a low temperature and you transfer a, a fixed quantity sort of of energy to it, that is going to go further to increase the disorder than if you transferred that same amount of energy into an already hot system. And the analogy here is that if you give a thousand dollars to a poor man, this seems like a huge impact on his net income or net worth. Whereas if you give $1,000 to a millionaire, it doesn't go very far. We can then combine these two statements to end up with an expression which says that the change in entropy for the system is equal to the heat transferred into the system divided by the temperature. And this would be the case for constant temperature. If the temperature isn't constant, we can instead write it like this, ds, and consider sort of the incremental amount of heat transferred divided by t, and then we can integrate both sides to find out what the actual change in entropy is, and so then we end up with this. We can rearrange this a little bit in one more way that makes this more useful. Just say that dq reversible is equal to tds. So this form here is one that we will use, and this form here is one that we will use. And in fact, sometimes we'll refer to this as using the second law of thermodynamics, even though it isn't the exact statement of the second law. So let's look at an example of how we can use this idea that entropy change is related to the amount of heat transferred divided by the temperature. So let's just rewrite that expression. We're going to consider a constant temperature example. So let's consider the melting of titanium. Titanium melts at 1668 degrees C. The enthalpy change for this process, liquid to solid, is 18.7 kilojoules per mole. And so I want to know what is the change in entropy for this melting process. So if we assume that this happens at constant pressure, then we can say so at constant P, which is a fine assumption to make, right? It's probably happening at one atmosphere. Then we can say that delta H is equal to Q, and we can then just use our equation. So delta S of this transformation is equal to delta H of this transformation divided by the temperature at which this occurs. We have to just be careful with our units. 
So this is 18,700 joules per mole. And our temperature is 1668 plus 298 degrees Kelvin, which gives us a final answer of nine and a half joules per mole Kelvin. So these are the units that we will always have on entropy, joules per mole Kelvin. And this is a typical sort of value for a, an entropy. It's usually on the order of sort of single uh, joules per mole Kelvin up to maybe 100 joules per mole Kelvin. Now that we have this relationship between entropy and the heat transferred, we can revisit uh, our ideal gas processes and find a way to calculate delta S for those. So this is where either we have constant volume, constant pressure, constant temperature, or adiabatic. So again, we have this relationship. And this is what we're going to use to build off of. Because if we have an expression for Q as a function of T, then we can easily find delta S. So let's start with isochoric. This is constant volume process. And in the constant volume process, we had that the work done was zero, and that du is equal to delta Q, and is equal to ncv dt. So to find delta S, we can just plug right in here. and. So we're going to plug this in to here. We're going to do this integral, and we are going to find out that delta S is equal to N C V ln of T2 over T1. So this expression here holds only for an isochoric process. Others as well for an isobaric process. This was constant um, pressure. In the case of constant pressure, uh, delta Q is equal to dH and equal to NCP dt. And so delta S looks like this. And we're going to plug this part in here. And we end up then with NCP ln of T2 over T1. So this looks similar to what we just found, only we have CP instead. For an adiabatic process, this one's pretty easy because by definition there was no heat transferred into the system and as a result there is also no entropy change for the system. And the last con uh, case is for isothermal. And for isothermal, we found that uh, negative delta W is equal to delta Q because du equals zero. And this is equal to negative negative PDV. So we have our equation for dS, which is delta Q over T. And we're going to plug this in here. And so we end up with the integral of P over T dV, and we can use the ideal gas law to substitute in here, and so we end up with the integral of NR over V dV, and this is an integral that we can do, and so we get delta S is equal to NR ln of V2 over V1. So this is the relationship for delta S for an isothermal system.